Frazier and company with the sledgehammer. On senior day, the hometown boy, Zach Frazier, amongst many honored today. And speaking of honoring, a legend today, Don Nealon will be in the house. And Cincinnati looking to spoil the party here in Morgantown. Welcome to Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus. The Cincinnati Bearcats coming in at three and seven, take it on West Virginia at six and four. Again on Senior Day. Welcome into Mountaineer Field alongside Orlando Franklin. I'm George Sedano. Marilyn Payne will join us in just a moment. Orlando, these two teams, despite the record, when you look at them, they're pretty much mirror images of each other. Yeah, both these football teams love to run the football. Both these guys coming in in the top 10 and rushing. But I get the sense of feeling today, George, that it's not going to be who could run the football, who could play this physical brand of football. It's going to be about finding those hidden yardages in the passing game and who could be more efficient once you get past the 50-yard line when it comes down to the red zone. Can you fit the ball into those tight windows in order to find success? The team that does that longer today will come out with the victory and of course the offensive game plan is headed by Neil Brown the head coach of West Virginia and earlier he joined Maryland coaches Jaheim White makes his first start at running back for you today what's the expectation around the around the ground game well that's the strength of our football team is our offensive line and Jaheim's really came on the last two weeks and he's earned this opportunity you know, anytime somebody gets injured, somebody else has to step up. And CJ didn't practice this week. We're hopeful that he'll be able to play some. But Jaheim's ready, and he's played extremely well the last two weeks. I know you want to get the pass game going. You said a minimum of 200 yards through the air. How does that happen? Well, we, we've we been hot and cold on the pass game. Like, we've had stretches there where we threw the ball really well. And, and Garrett's more than capable. He's a big-time player. I think he'll show it today. Uh, we're going to try to get the ball downfield early and get it downfield often today. Thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks. All right, Orlando, West Virginia has won the toss, and they have elected to receive. Yeah, both these teams today, George, it's all about starting fast, right? Playing that physical brand of football. Both these guys love to run the ball, and honestly, both of these guys have very impressive running back rooms. So look for both teams to try to create that advantage early and often with the run game, getting, thriving for at least four yards a clip. West Virginia to take it out. Fox gets upended near the 20 yard line. Cam Willis, number 27, took him down. So Garrett Green will come out here. And, you know, Orlando, he can run the ball, he can throw it deep. There are some challenges, though, in the intermediate passes for him this season. Yeah, you know, he has to get his technique down, right? When he's throwing the ball down the field, get his shoulders downfield, but also work it and clean up some of that footwork. Jaheim White in the backfield getting the start. C.J. Donaldson suited up and warmed up, but we'll see if he gets in the game. And a deep shot down the field is complete near midfield. Traylon Gray with the big catch there. The freshman out of Tallahassee, Florida. That is a nice play action. Great pressure, understanding the feel of it. Garrett with his eyes down the field the whole entire time. You know, I love this for this offense. where It's been struggling throwing the ball to be able to go deep from the get-go and take their shots and connect early in the game. A 28-yard gain for the Mountaineers, and they start off in excellent position here. Quick toss to the boundary. Down the sideline, making a man miss and spinning around for the first down is Rodney Gallagher, another freshman. This one from Pennsylvania. And Jordan Young with the tackle, but the young freshman getting the touches early. Yeah, just an RPO right there. Gallagher doing a great job following his blocks, being able to be explosive on the ground. I love West Virginia when they get the ball out to these wide receivers on the perimeter, allowing everybody to get involved in the running game, but also blocking on the perimeter. Great play calls to start off this game. And we were told by Coach Brown that they were going to need about 200 yards plus in the air to make this work. There's Jaheim White picking up another first down. And this West Virginia team is moving the football down to the 28-yard line. Excellent run there by yeah, the this, freshman. 
this play is just a counter OT pulling the guard, um, but following Nick Mullen out there, a big right tackle gets in front of Jaheim for to go get that first down. An 11 yard gain. Pistol formation. They've already taken a shot down the field, screen, and now a second run. Not much there this time. Cincinnati does a good job there defensively on that particular play. Dante Corleone, a name we'll say a lot today because he is the stalwart on defense for Cincinnati. Yeah, big number two, Dante Corleone, and also number zero, um, Jawan Briggs. Those are the two guys that makes this defense go for Cincinnati. It's a tough matchup between Dante Corleone and Zach Frazier today. All eyes are going to be on those two big boys in the middle to see who gets the best of who. Jaheim White again in the backfield. Green's going to throw. He's under pressure, rolling to his right. Throws down the sideline. Incomplete intended for his big target, Devin Carter. But a flag on the play could be in the area of holding. Holding, number 87, offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. Our referee, Michael Vanderbilt, with the call there. Yeah, you see Cole Taylor right at the top of your screen, the big tight end. You know, Garrett starts to roll to his right. He has to be able to let go once he feels the quarterback and just almost have eyes in the back of your head. That's what makes it so hard for these tight ends when you have these offenses that want to move the pocket. You don't know where the quarterback's going to be. So look for Taylor to get better later on in the game because he's a big part of this offense. Oh, no question. They love going down the field where he streaks down the field. Fox is in motion. They looked for him on the screen. Now Green is going to tuck it and run. And out of bounds near the 35 and hit. Looked like pretty late near the Mountaineer sideline. The fans don't love it, but no flag. Daniel Greshik with the tackle on the sideline. Yeah, Garrett Green doing a good job getting what he could get. But Daniel Gresham, he's got to be able to pull off. That one is very close right there. Look for the referees to keep an eye on that to make sure this game doesn't get out of hand. Third and long now, third and 16. Holding play put them in a tough spot. And this is not where West Virginia and Neil Brown want to be. Green, plenty of time. Airs it out down the field. Fox was open, but he overshot his target. Preston Fox, the Morgantown kid, was the intended target. Yeah, Coach Neil Brown and this offensive coaching staff, you know, Chad Scott, offensive coordinator, they got to be upset with that holding call. You're going to have to figure out a way to make sure that you stay ahead of the down and distance. When you are a running football team, and especially when you cross the 50, you cannot have any of those, th those penalties that hold you back and put you in tough situations. A long field goal attempt here on fourth down. 52-yard attempt for Michael Hayes. Hayes has not attempted a 50-yarder this year. The kick is up and no good. Wide right. West Virginia moved the ball, could not capitalize. Scoreless here early on. Be honored today at the end of the first quarter. There's Mountaineer Field, the hill. John Denver was here for his first game, hired back in December of 1979, was here from 1980 to 2000, and honored today will join us in the booth in the second quarter. Brady Lichtenberg gets the start instead of Emory Jones for Cincinnati, and Lichtenberg dumps it off into the flat. Not much there for Evan Prater. A short gain there of about three yards. Yeah, both teams coming in today a little unconventional, right? I mean, you look at West Virginia and what they typically do being a running offense. They start off throwing that thing, and now you see Brady Lichtenberg in the, in the game starting this thing over Emory Jones, who has typically started for Cincinnati. Corey Kiner, though, is in the backfield. He's looking for 1,000 yards this season. Again, Lichtenberg was kind of a, a someone who was pushing Emory Jones and coming in usually in the third or fourth series. It's Kiner pushing his way near the sticks. He'll be just shy, a five-yard gain, two yards shy of the first down, third and two coming up. Yeah, Corey Kiner, he's been a guy that, man, when you turn on the tape, he pops. He is a physical runner. He is tough to get down, runs through arm tackles, 
And man, this year, he's had a heck of a year, you know, creeping up on that 1,000-yard mark, like you said. Hometown kid from Cincinnati in the pistol formation at the moment. Third and two. They give it to Kiner right up the gut, and he's going to get close. They may have to measure this one. Corey Kiner, the ball carrier. Anthony Wilson took him down. I like that play call by offensive coordinator Brad Glenn because it's not playing around. You're going to give it to your big running back that's done a lot for you this year. Not a lot of motions, not a lot of anything. Let's try to go get it, but it's fourth, down, fourth and short. And maybe they're not going to go get it because the punt team is coming out now. Scott Satterfield thought about it for a second and decided better of it. Preston Fox set to receive around his own 10 yard line. I like that right here though, George, right? It's right around midfield. The UR defense was able to stop him on the first drive. You don't have to panic, don't hesitate. You can punt the ball away, play, continue to play some good defense. Hey, Fletcher punts it and takes a Bearcats roll to about the six yard line. Scoreless at the moment, a 51 yard punt, no return. The Mountaineers will have the ball in a moment. Welcome back to Morgantown. Scoreless between the Mountaineers and the Bearcats. The Mountaineers statue just outside the stadium. And the Mountaineers protecting their home turf thus far, Orlando. 21st meeting between these two teams. Mountaineers lead that series by an overwhelming fashion in the first meeting in 12 years. Yeah, um, look for the Mountaineers this time go around on offense to get to that wide zone game, right? Where you're getting Cincinnati to run sideline to sideline. They have a young, talented running back room, but Jaheim White is one of the best running backs that I've seen in football this year with his patience and his ability to explode through the line of scrimmage. Play action for Garrett under pressure, gets hit as he throws, and just out of the reach of Devin Carter. Quarterback pressure there by the big fella, Dante Cor Corleone. Yeah, so far right now, Cincinnati taking care of business, being able to get to the quarterback and affect the quarterback. You know, that's what it's all about. Sometimes you don't get the sacks, but just being able to affect the quarterback and making throwing it a little bit earlier than what he wants to is just enough. And as we saw in that last play, to bring up second and 10. Corleone, another Cincinnati kid. Plenty of room, stays on his feet as he weaves through traffic and picks up the first down. An excellent run there of 18 yards by White. That's what this young man does so special. You know, West Virginia does a lot with their offense with a pull in and tackles pull in, tight ends pull in. Jaheim White does a great job of just finding the hole, but using the patience and then exploding through it to go pick up an explosive run. Getting the spot start today for C.J. Donaldson, the freshman from William Penn High School in York, Pennsylvania. First down and 10. Again to White. This time he's wrapped up in the backfield. Going to be a loss on the play of about three and a half, four yards. Daniel Greshik was there to take care of business. Yeah, talking to defensive coordinator Brian Brown for Cincinnati this week, we talked about, hey, how do you stop this run game? He talked about setting edges. So these defensive ends and D linemen are very important to the success for Cincinnati today. And as you just saw, Daniel taking care of business, being able to set the edge and not give Jaheim White any ability to bounce that thing outside. Second and 14, Greshik who made the tackle, a transfer from Nevada and Utah State as well, LA native from Crenshaw High School. Hand off again to White up the middle and pushing forward, diving forward near the 35 yard line to the 33. Greshik again was able to bring him down after a 10 yard gain. Yeah, and I continue to talk and sing praise about Jaheim White because those little runs that it looks like you're only going to get two or three yards, he finds a way to squeak through those every single time to turn that into a successful run. And Jaheim kind of limping off a little bit out the sideline there. C.J. Donaldson, the normal starter, who was a little dinged up in a game-time decision, now checks in. Orlando, we'll get to a story about Donaldson with you. You've known that young man for a very long time. But let's see if he converts on a third and four. He gets the carry. 
pushing the pile forward. He should have enough. Yes, he does. A five-yard gain for Donaldson in the first half. He's their bell cow. You know, shows great vision, but they love the power that this young man displays. Not often does he get tackled by one person. And he's also a football junkie, man. It's unbelievable to see what C.J. Donaldson has done with his, so far, his young college career. Miami, Florida native, Gulliver Prep High School. A high school made famous by the legend Sean Taylor, who went to the University of Miami and played for the Washington football team. Handoff on the right side. Not much there this time for Donaldson. Jack Dingle takes him down. But you've known Donaldson literally since he was a baby. Yeah, I, I saw him this morning in the elevator. I told him, hey, you remember me? I held him as a little baby back in the day. Second and eight. Antonio Dixon, his uncle, was your teammate at the University of Miami. One of my best friends and his mom, Tanisha, his, uh, his grandmother, Big Red. I've known them since I was 18 years old, a freshman in college. You got to love how it all comes full circle here in this beautiful sport of college football. Play action for Green. Green takes a shot down the field for Fox. Lot of contact, and the flags are on the field. Kalen Carroll in coverage, and this one should be an easy pass interference. Yeah, easy passing interference, but Preston Fox does a great job adjusting to the football. Pass interference, number 21, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Let's see the pressure here on the quarterback. Big 99, Rob Jackson. And then you see an easy pass interference call on Carroll. Yeah, love that Preston Fox was able to find the football on that and try to come back to it to force that pass interference on Kellen Carroll right there. A great heads up job by the wide receiver, the soft, retro sophomore wide receiver Preston Fox right there. Justin Johnson in there, but Garrett Green keeps it, weaving through traffic and slides down at the 20 yard line. A huge gain there of 25 yards for Garrett Green, and there's that element that we talked about earlier. He can show off his wheels. Yeah, when you have a quarterback that can run, their check down hits their legs, but sometimes in the games, you just have to call those quarterback keepers early. You know, talking to this coaching staff this week, they said, you know, when you look at Neil Brown, he's had experience with running quarterbacks. He says about 9 to 11 times a game, you want to call it up, run it, and have quarterback design runs. And you see Garrett Green take advantage right there. Green with another keeper, and this time taken down at the 15, an 8-yard gain after a 22-yard gain. That's 30 yards on the ground on this drive alone for Green. Dorian Jones on the tackle. West Virginia in the hurry up. They've been an excellent red zone team this season. And that percentage could be even higher, incomplete, intended for Carter near the goal line. That percentage could be even higher, Coach Neil Brown told us. They've taken a few knees at the end of games that have cost their red zone percentage. But this play to Carter looked like just couldn't hang on. Yeah, you know, this is a play that you want to see Garrett Green be able to get that football down a little bit. Carter had outside leverage. He could throw that back shoulder. He could put better placement of the football for easier completion right there. So that's where you want to see Garrett Green, quarterback for West Virginia, take the next steps and not, you know, be able to convert and not bring up these third and shorts. Third and two. Carter in motion and whistles on the field. Looks like it'll be a timeout. West Virginia. Prior to the snap, West Virginia has called their first charge timeout. Let's see what Coach Brown decides to talk over with his squad. We'll be back in a moment. Here in the first quarter, scoreless between Cincinnati and West Virginia. Big third and two coming up, but let's check in with Maryland first. Jaheim White getting the start at running back for the first time today, but after being injured on the first drive of the game, he just left the field. He's been spending time on the bike and taking jogs back and forth, communicating with the training staff about pain in his right lower leg, pointing to his calf muscle, the connection with the knee. He's trying to be ready to go back out on the field. Thank you, Marilyn. Would be a big loss considering Donaldson has already dinged up himself as well. And the handoff up the middle. 
Should be enough for the first down. Yes, it is a three yard gain by Justin Johnson, the St. Louis native, the junior. Out yeah, of he's, norm he's normally their goal line specialist, right? Justin Johnson. So I love that they put him in in that situation on a third and two to make sure you move the chains in that situation. West Virginia in the red zone have scored 29 touchdowns on 45 attempts in the red zone. Johnson in the backfield. First down, 10 from the 12. Green, big toss to the back. Of the Gallagher. And Gallagher spun around. Stays on his feet, though, because he was never actually touching the ground. And Deshaun Pace finally flips him over and pushes him out of bounds after a five-yard gain. Looked like it wasn't going to be much of a gain at all, but a heady play there by Gallagher. Rodney Gallagher, just unbelievable flexibility to be able to get his feet back underneath him on that spin around right there to go fight for some extra yardage. First completion of the drive for Green. He's had a couple of big runs. Seventy-five from the seven. Toss to the middle, incomplete, intended for Fox in the end zone. Jordan Young with tight coverage on Fox. Yeah, very interesting situation right there that Garrett Green goes to Preston Fox. I mean, great route at the top, but I want these guys to go to their big tight end, Cole Taylor, in a situation like that, right? In the red zone, 6-7, you know, versus Preston Fox being 5-10. Cole Taylor. Colorado native has four touchdowns this season. Third and five. And off to Johnson, and Johnson stretches forward. He's going to be near the sticks. Looks like just shy of the first down. Dante Corleone again in the middle, plugging things up. He does a great job of just always understanding where the football is, using his hands to shed blocks and go make tackles. Man, this guy's going to be extremely exciting to watch for the remainder of his college career, but when he also takes the jump and plays in the National Football League. Very interested to see what West Virginia does on this fourth and one. As you can see, the big boys up front for Cincinnati, they're thinking it over, and they're ready to go as well. Strength on strength is the offensive line of Only one left and burned two through the first quarter already, and it's not even over yet. Yeah, and two in the last couple minutes, right? Since they have passed the 20 yard line, too. So that could hurt this football team moving forward. Keep an eye on that, certainly, but we mentioned big Dante Corleone. He's been a Don for sure when you see his production out there, Orlando. Yeah, watching him on film this week, I was happy that I was retired and lost 100 pounds, and I no longer play offensive line <laughs> because this young man has a high motor. I mean, you don't often see guys that are 320-plus pounds that just go and go and go and play every snap. He doesn't come off the field. He can rush the passer, stop the run, and he's always a, a guy that this team looks to get going. He's one of the leaders on that defense for sure. 14th play of the drive upcoming. And there's Frazier, also an NFL prospect for West Virginia, the leader of that offensive line and arguably of the team. West Virginia this season, 16 for 31 on fourth downs. And with C.J. Donaldson back there in the backfield, we'll see what happens here on fourth and short. It's got to be some kind of stretch or a throw to the end zone, in my opinion, George. Green keeps it, and that's in the end zone for the touchdown. Garrett Green scampers in. His eighth, ninth rushing touchdown of the season. A three-yard score for West Virginia, and the Mountaineers are on top. I love what they do here. A lot of misdirection. Got guys going all different types of ways. That's how you stress out a defense. You got to give these linebackers a lot to look at. And then Garrett Green able to kind of get his head downhill, his helmet downhill. Full head of steam to get in the end zone for the Mountaineers. 14 plays, 91 yards, 6 minutes and 42 seconds off the clock. 
West Virginia on senior day gets in the end zone. Garrett Green, the three yard rushing touchdown. Again, his ninth rushing touchdown of the season, 21st overall this season. And the thing that impressed me the most is they started this drive on the nine yard line. They were able to mix in some RPO, some zone read options, and really take advantage of a aggressive defense. Cincinnati's defense is one of the better run stopping defenses in the country, except for a couple weeks ago when they played against Oklahoma State. going to receive. He is going to be wearing a different number. Let's check in with Maryland. Although West Virginia was able to come up with a big stop, a three and out against Cincinnati on the Bearcats' first drive, I believe it's because they anticipated the switch at quarterback, Brady Littenberg, getting the start. Their staff members telling one another at the end of warmups, I think he's going to be the guy to go first after observing him warm up with the different ones and teammates. We'll see who gets the, the next drive here for Cincinnati. Thank you, Maryland. Cincinnati, Xavier Henderson with the fair catch. They'll begin their next drive at the 25-yard line. The West Virginia drive of 91 yards, five of it came through the air, 15 via penalty, and 71 via the ground. That's their recipe for success. And now, you know, Cincinnati is trotting out Emory Jones at the quarterback position, which for me, this is a better solution for Cincinnati offensively. When you have a quarterback that can run the RPO, it stresses defenses. It forces cornerbacks and DBs to play more trap coverage, but also makes them make more decisions because the quarterback can be explosive with his legs and really expose the defense. Jones takes his first snap of the game today. On the left side, complete near the 30-yard line to Braden Smith. Braden Smith, an excellent compliment to the number one receiver, Xavier Henderson, who received the kickoff. And they told us how crafty and shifty he is, understands space, and you saw a little bit of that there. But with Emory Jones, they say sometimes this season, as we have an injury, it looks like, potentially on the field, Beanie Bishop, the senior, transfer from Minnesota, being attended to at the moment. Yeah, this is going to be huge if he's not able to, to go for this Virginia, this West Virginia defense. One of the leaders out there on the field, great in coverage. He's one of those guys that once you know he's on the field, he locks down one side of the field. You know, I, talking to this coaching staff and defensive coordinator Jordan Leslie, he joked with him this year, talked about he would like to see him get a little bit more interceptions. But as you see, just at the end of the play right there, gets rolled up on or, and ends up getting, you know, that leg looks like it, somebody behind him. So we'll see if he's able to go. Well, walking off on his own power is a good sign. Beanie Bishop tied for second in the Big 12 in interceptions with four and he could have had more that's what that's been the thing this coaching staff has actually kind of been on him saying that if he if he could catch a little bit better what did they say he'd be a wide receiver or or he'd be leading the, the league maybe second in interceptions if he caught a little bit better Ball in the 30. second and five coming up for emory jones and company with Jones, they've said he's seen things a little late at times, too many turnovers to their liking, maybe perhaps why Brady was pushing him recently for playing time. Brady Lichtenberg got the start, and Jones pushing as well, pushing the pile for a first down. An excellent gain there of about eight yards. And that's where he is going to separate himself, right, from Brady Lichtenberg. He's going to be able to separate himself with his legs. So a great heads-up play, nice little RPO, something that Emory Jones has done all of his life, but just using that extra physicality, getting behind this offensive line to go pick up that first down. First and 10 from the 38-yard line. Cincinnati in their own territory. Hand off. Kiner spins out of trouble and pushes forward to pick up a nice chunk of change there. Lee Koba with the tackle. Five-yard gain for Kiner. Corey 
Connor is special. He, he's supposed to be dead to rights for a tackle for a loss, but he turns that into a five-yard gain just because of his toughness. He's always moving forward, and he's always looking to try to embrace the contact and try to, you know, fall forward rather than backwards. He's been special this year for them. 23 rushes, 129 yards, averaging 5.6 a couple weeks ago. That was against Houston. Piner on the left side with a hole, and he's flipped up after a short gain. It will be two yards shy of the first down after a three-yard gain. Anthony Wilson took him down. Sometimes, down you look at, sometimes you look at those three-yard gains, George, and you're like, man, they're not that special. But those are the body blows. That's what wears on a defense. I know that was just a three-yard gain right there, but in the fourth quarter, having a big back like Corey Kiner, that's when it turns into 12-yard gains, 14-yard gains. Ryan Montgomery now checks in. He's got great hands, so look for him out of the backfield. He's kind of a combo back there. And the play action, toss to the boundary is complete but short of the first down number seven Mateer, the tight end is going to be short and that'll do it for the first quarter west virginia on senior day leading here against the bearcats but the bearcats will have a decision coming up on the other side 149 wins at West Virginia, the most ever by a head coach here in Morgantown, four-time National Coach of the Year, and of course, a College Football Hall of Famer gets his name put up here at the stadium. There's his family, and coach will join us, Orlando, sometime in the second quarter. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, when you just think about football and what he's done, for West Virginia football, but also the state. It's been unbelievable um, being able to recruit back in those days when you had to pick up a map and figure out where you were going and stop at every payphone, you know, to call home. I can't wait to ask him some questions about just back in the day recruiting. Oh, no doubt. We'll have some fun with him in a little bit. Mason Fletcher to punt on the fourth and two. Preston Fox set to receive inside his 10. So Scott Satterfield on fourth and two near midfield. Elects to kick the football. Time of possession right now in favor of West Virginia, nearly two to one. West Virginia with 131 total yards. Cincinnati only with 30. Soccer style punt gets it off. Fox will field it. Fair caught at his 15 yard line. If I'm Cincinnati and Coach Satterfield, I'm, I got to get my offense in a rhythm. There's been two series right now for my offense where we've had two different quarterbacks out there. That makes it tough for any offense to get going when you're, there's that much change. So now going into the third series, they're going to know who's going to be the quarterback and have some familiarity, but they got to get things going. West Virginia, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep being explosive on offense, running misdirection, and giving the, uh, this Cincinnati defense a lot to look at. I'm a big believer of if you have two quarterbacks, you don't really have any. You know that old adage. If you have two, you don't have any. Right. Yep. No, I like it. I mean, Jaheim White checks back in. Got dinged up early in the first quarter. Picks up three yards on that play, but it's good to see the young man back, the freshman from Yorktown, York, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and I'm sure that this coaching staff is happy that Jaheim White is able to go because even though C.J. Donaldson Junison, Jr. has been dinged up, it's a nice one-two combination when both of these guys are able to be in a game especially for a team that runs so much wide zone. You want to be able to keep your guys fresh and be able to roll them in and out. Second and seven. From the 18-yard line, Carter in motion. Again to White up the middle. Not much there. Deshaun Pace and, uh, with the tackle. Here's White. what Jaheim White did earlier in the game prior to the injury. You see him there weaving through traffic. Get big chunk yards for West Virginia. He checks out of the game. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 13.58, please. 13.58. Thank 
Justin Johnson checks in for Jaheim White, who has seven carries for 37 yards at the moment. Third and long for the Mountaineers. Green, got time, scrambles. He's gonna try to pick up the first down, and he's right at the sticks. Taken down by Gresham, and he should have it up for the first down. An eight yard gain for Green, and again doing damage with his legs. I love how quick he is to get through his read. Looks at one, two guys, nobody's there, then it's about getting downfield. But he doesn't slide, he knows exactly where the sticks are, stays physical, stays up, and goes and gets the first down. 32 career games, only his 11th start of his career. He's been here for a number of years. Play action, under pressure, throws it in the face of pressure, and it's caught right on the money to White down the sideline. Dial it up, a house call for Jaheim White. 75 yards, and the Mountaineers take a 13 to nothing lead. First career receiving touchdown for Jaheim White. I love the play call. Garrett Green was able to get a first down. This is not a third down call. This is a running football team, West Virginia, but they have aired it out a lot today on first down. And Garrett Green sits in there, takes the big shot, but is able to deliver a strike down the field. A absolute dime to Jaheim White. And Jaheim White shows you with that explosive playmaking ability what he could do in the open field. The extra point, Michael Hayes is up and good. Four plays, 85 yards, two, two minutes and one second off the clock. The big strike to Jaheim White. He gets his first receiving TD and puts his team up by two touchdowns. of 20 plus yards or more this season a career long touchdown for Garrett Green and the longest play of the season Orlando for West Virginia yeah and, and Garrett Green does it on a nickel blitz you know Cincinnati sends Ken Willis on a blitz and Garrett Green sits in there takes the shot and is able to find Jaheim White four plays 85 yards a little over two minutes off the clock Big chunk plays for West Virginia thus far. Xavier Henderson to receive inside his five. And he is corralled at the 18, a flag on the play. Taurus Simmons brings him down, but let's see what the laundry's about. We'll hear from Michael Vanderbilt, the lead official, momentarily. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, Maryland Payne with you. Great return. Illegal block in the back, number 46. Receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Antoine Peak Jr. Yeah, just right up top by the 20 yard line. Just that little touch extending the arms. Gonna get it every single time. The referee's gonna be able to throw that flag. But again, another misfire by Cincinnati. Starting this thing off in a hole. You know, Coach Satterfield talked about this team and being undisciplined. The last couple weeks, they haven't had a lot of penalties, and they've won. They've been able to take care of business. But when they do have penalties, this team has just not been that great. They've been able to overcome. They've got to figure out a way to play a lot more cleaner on all three phases of the football game. Emory Jones and company will start this drive inside their 10 at the 9-yard line. Ryan Montgomery in the backfield with him. Play action, Jones plenty of time. Rolling to his right on the run, throws and it is caught, but will he be inbounds? They'll say he's not. Xavier Henderson, Beanie Bishop back in the game and in coverage there. Good to see Beanie back in the game. Uh, Xavier Henderson, usually their deep threat, but right there, getting into scramble drill mode very close but as you see bobbled it a little bit he did bobble it and by the time he hauled it in at his shoulder it looked like his knee was out of bounds 
Yeah, it looked very close. I'm glad that they're going to take a second look at this one because this could be the spark that Cincinnati needs offensively. When you're a struggling football team and things are not going your way, it could just be one play to capture momentum. And sometimes just a, one of those circus plays right here, as we're seeing, it's very close by Xavier Henderson on the sideline. That could be that play that, that helps this offense get back into rhythm. Xavier Henderson, again, they're reviewing it. We'll see what the call will be by the officials. And while we wait for that, let's take another look here. This is the other angle we had, I think, is a better angle at where the ball was secured or not. Yeah, right there, that one's tough. As you said earlier, partner, great to see Beanie Bishop Jr. back in there, and you see what he brings. He brings the ability to play tight coverage, but also just to get his hands in there on this throw to make force Xavier Henderson to have to double catch it, where now this call is so close because of it. Well, we have a legend here in the booth with us. Left hand and down at the 20-yard line. First down, Cincinnati. Wow. So they'll say that the knee was in bounds before it slid out. So first down, Cincinnati. Xavier Henderson, an 11-yard gain there. And they will be near the 20-yard line. As I mentioned, a legend joining us today. Honored, immortalized, the great Don Nealon, all-time winningest coach here in West Virginia. Coach, thank you so much for joining us here. Well, thank you for having me. Hold on one second. We're having some technical difficulties with Coach's mic. Hopefully we can get that sorted out here. Coach, give us one second. My apologies. Handoff up the middle. And a couple of yards there, about a two-and-a-half-yard gain for Cincinnati. Coach, our apologies. Thank you. What was today like for you out there? Well, it's kind of humbling, to be honest about it. I, I never dreamed my name would be up there with the greats. You know, I coached two of those guys, Daryl Talley and Major Harris, and uh, uh, they were great players for me, and they never had a coach up there. And to be honest, I was shocked. I, I had no idea that they'd do something like that. I, uh, you know, when I came here, the program was kind of in, uh, in the funk, so sort of that, you know, whoa. Yeah, tough play there. Emory Jones cannot haul it in. Marcus Floyd. First one there, and the home crowd got to like that one, Coach, I'm wow. sure. Huh. Yeah. You know, we're a better football team than a lot of people will know. So let's see what happens here in a third and 16 with Coach yeah. Nealon in the booth with us. I never like third and 16. Yeah, no, no <laughs> offensive coach, but the defensive coach does yeah. as West Virginia is showing pressure here. Especially two teams that just love to run the football. These are the hard down and distances where you have to throw it in a situation like this. Jones in trouble, escapes one tackler and just dives down forward to save the drive and be able to punt. Lee Koba with the pressure there on Jones. Cincinnati looking like they just elected to, to try to punt this one and trying to play some good defense with, with that play call right there. Cincinnati forced to punt, so we'll take a break after the punt. Coach Nealon will stick around with us, and we will chat with Coach Nealon about this wonderful moment that he was able to celebrate with his family on the field earlier as he is honored and immortalized here at Mountaineer Stadium, Mountaineer Field. The punt. Box fields it inside his 40 and taken down immediately near the 35-yard line. A tackle there made by Aaron Turner. The wide receiver for Cincinnati, a 48-yard punt, no return. And we'll be back, as you see there, as the name was unveiled here at the stadium. The legendary Don Nealon will continue to join us in a moment. Back here to Mountaineer Field, West Virginia up 14-0. Don Nealon, the legend, who's joining us in the booth. How many grandkids out there, Coach, with you? Well, I have five grandkids and I have nine great grandkids. There you go. And they were all out there. That's awesome to see, certainly. 149 wins here at West Virginia, 202 overall. Again, the all-time winningest coach 
in West Virginia history. And a beautiful day here for football as Garrett Green and company take the field. We'll keep tabs on the game, but coach, we certainly want to talk to you as Garrett Green makes a man miss and picks up a nice chunk of change there. With you and how you built this program, you get hired December of 1979. What was it like when you first came here? Well, they had had four straight losing seasons, and uh, my first team, I never had a kid on the team that had ever played on a winning team. And uh, so that entire entire spring, I just, I just had to work for the chin up. I had to try to make them believe that they could become winners. And the first year we won six football games, we played 12. We had to go out to Hawaii in the middle of the year, believe it or not. Oh, wow. And in the middle of the season? Yeah. Usually those are at the beginning yeah. or the late in the season. Yeah. And we had to come back and play Pitt and Penn State back to back. And uh, we lost both of them. Uh, Pitt was, I think, number three in the country at that time. They had a guy by the name of Marino, a quarterback. He was pretty good, I remember. Yeah, he, yeah. I think he was pretty good. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we just... Uh, hard work and uh, worked our tail off recruiting. This stadium was starting to be built. Um, nothing was here. Yeah, the hill was back there uh, oh, yeah. when you were here. Yeah. yeah, just nothing. And they are reviewing Garrett Green to see if the ball was jarred loose. Let's listen to the official. Yeah. After review, ruling on the field is confirmed. Third down. So Green will keep the ball. Green, by the way, in the air today, four of eight for 120 yards and a touchdown. Now, let's talk about your, the the coincidence. They're playing Cincinnati. You're being honored, and, and, and of course, to discuss your legendary career, your first game was against Cincinnati and first win, of course, as well. What was that like? That's amazing. Not only that, my first college job was at the University of Cincinnati. Oh, wow. In 1963. Yeah, and John Denver performed in your first game here, right. too. What a, what a great day that must have been. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, 50,000 people here. There, were, off, there were no end light. zones or anything Ryan like that. Threats. But, uh, yeah, that, that was just, uh, I, was, uh, I was so nervous for that game. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, there was a heck of a lot of, Oh, everybody in the state was so excited. A lot of hoopla surrounding you coming yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Um, coming from Michigan and yeah. 50,000 people. They'd never, at that time, that was that was the biggest city in the entire state of West Virginia. Right, right. And, and, uh, and they all came here and met here for you. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was unbelievable. Ryan McG McGovern lets that one sail the over his head for a touchdown. Governor was here. And, we had a great time that day, and John Ven John Denver saying country roads, and away we went. You went off from there. Now, Orlando has a question about recruiting for you back in those days. Coach, you come here, I mean, traditionally you're recruiting here in the state, but you were a coach that said, hey, you know what? I want to go outside the state. I want to start recruiting all over the country. Could you talk to us about that and just how recruiting is so much differently today than what we see back in the day where you had to get on the road with that road map and figure it out well gotta understand when i came here i got on an airplane and flew over west virginia and all i saw was trees <laughs> <laughs> and i said hey i don't think there are many players in those trees <laughs> and i said i fly over ohio i see rooftops fly over new jersey i see rooftops and there's kids in those houses and uh there were very few football players in the state of West Virginia in 1980. Now we've built we've built some football programs in high schools here recently, but uh, I built a I took a circle mm -hmm. and I went 300 400 miles radius around Morgantown, and Fire that's snap. where we concentrated along with the state of Florida. Offense. And I was. We heavily recruited Florida. That's what I was going to ask you. You were really one of the first coaches from this part of the of the world exactly. to go down there and get players. Yeah, we averaged getting f about four kids a year out of Florida. I. Uh, what was your recruiting pitch, Coach? How did you get them out of that warm and sunny weather? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, that's an amazing thing. 
I just told him, boy, oh boy, you're going to love those mountains when you come up there. <laughs> I, I said, you're just going to love them. And, and then when they got here, I just prayed we didn't have a snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it worked out pretty well for you with those kids from Florida, there's no doubt. Uh, third down upcoming for Cincinnati as the Mountaineer defense is doing a heck of a job at the moment. Coach, not only, though, what you did for the football program, but what you did for the state, really, putting it on the map in a way, because the football program at the university grew because of your success on the field. Well, the big thing we did is we made the state proud of their football program and the whole state just became excited and uh, at that time they were down a little bit and they just became excited about football they were always excited about basketball here jerry west had a legacy and uh, we gave him a legacy for football you know, we played, nobody ever dreamed we could play for the national championship in football. Nobody ever dreamt we could do that. And we did it. Well, listen, that was my first introduction. I'm 46 years old. My first introduction to West Virginia football were those major Harris teams. I was a young kid, uh, you know, 10, 11 years old at that time, watching those teams play. And man, were they fun to watch, for sure. Yeah. Like I say, nobody in West Virginia ever dreamt that we could do that. You know, my third year, we went out to Norman, Oklahoma and scored more points in Norman, Oklahoma than anybody ever did. Yeah. And nobody ever dreamt that a team from West Virginia could do that. And we did it. And that guy with those grandkids that flipped the coin, he was my quarterback. Yeah. He married my daughter. I know, Jeff Hostetler. Yeah. I know him well, won a Super Bowl with the Giants. We got to take a break, Coach. Thank you so yep. much. Congratulations Thanks. to you and your family. A, a you. legendary career. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. Congrats, Coach. All right. Don Nealon immortalized here at Mountaineer Field. Legendary Don Nealon was in the booth with us. There he is with his son-in-law, Jeff Hostetler, who played here, won a Super Bowl. Major Harris, that was my introduction to West Virginia. And, of course, Daryl Talley, who played many years for the Buffalo Bills as well and played on four teams that went to a Super Bowl, and now Don Nealon immortalized here at Mountaineer Field. What a treat, Orlando, to have him in the booth. Oh, absolutely. Stayed very close to this program as well. I believe his son's a equipment boy, or a equipment guy for this roster, for this Mountaineer football team. And Garrett Green making him proud as he has a huge run inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Deshaun Pace chases him out of bounds. And Green, another opportunity to show off his wheels, a 28-yard gain. He's been accelerated today with his thought process, with reading coverage, understanding that there's nothing there, and being able to use his legs to get explosive run after explosive run. He's doing a heck of a job and has a great feel for this game so far, George. 251 yards for West Virginia thus far, only 38 for Cincinnati. Total domination for the Mountaineers. Donaldson breaks a tackle, heads to the end zone. Another touchdown for the Mountaineers. C.J. Donaldson, 12 yards. C.J. Donaldson doing what C.J. Donaldson does best, run off tackle in between the, those big defensive linemen, showing that excellent vision, and then when getting out to the open space, accelerating to the end zone. Just an excellent job by that young man, who was a game-time decision today with a lower body injury. Doesn't look like that injury is, is hurting him at all right now. Two plays, 40 yards, 50 seconds off the clock. Michael Hayes for the extra point attempt. And it is up and good. West Virginia in control here in the first half. C.J. Donaldson, the sophomore from Miami Gulliver Prep High School, taking care of business for the third touchdown of the day for the Mountaineers. West Virginia, five possessions today, three touchdowns. C.J. Donaldson scored on that last play. 
his 11th rushing touchdown of the season. That's 16th in the nation. And West Virginia, Orlando, four plays of 20 plus yards, four runs of 10 plus yards already in this one. They've been very explosive offensively, whether it's been in the air or in the run game. They're spreading the ball around. They have, coming into this game, had six guys with at least 32 rushes on the season. This Mountaineer offense loves to run the football, and Cincinnati has not been able to stop it. So look for them to continue to go down that road. Fair catch, no. Fair catch by Xavier Henderson. And here's a replay of that TD by the young man you held as a baby, Orlando. Yeah, great vision. And then just understanding coverage and, and how defenses are going to play. You can tell that C.J. Donaldson is a film junkie and understands football because as soon as he passes that line of scrimmage, he knows that he's going to that left end zone and he's trying to get to that pylon as fast as possible. And for those that don't know or may not have tuned in at the beginning of our broadcast, his uncle Antonio Dixon, you played with him at the University of Miami. You've known the family forever and you legitimately held him as a baby, C.J. Donaldson. He was probably pretty big as a baby, too. He's a big kid out there. Held him as a baby, but also knew him before he was even born, George. Yeah, there you have it. And Kiner, a good running back himself, gets spun around to the 32-yard line, a seven-yard gain for Kiner. Ben Cutter, the freshman from Denver, North Carolina, East Lincoln High School, brings him down. Yeah, I know right now it's 21 nothing, but if you're Cincinnati, all you need to do is focus on the next play. The next play is the most important play. Wide receivers got to do their job, be one-on-one -on -one coverage. Tight ends create separation, and quarterbacks have to be on time with the football to get back into this one. Second and three, Kiner spinning out of trouble, enough for a first down, a four-yard gain as Brady Lichtenberg is at quarterback again, and they have shuffled. Lichtenberg and Emory Jones in and out of the lineup in this one more than they have in previous games. Lichtenberg has certainly gotten in on a number of series previously, but he has gone back and forth and basically alternated series here. Yeah, I like this move for Brad Glenn, offensive coordinator, because you're down by 21 points. You have to be able to be on time with the football and throw the football to get back in this one. And Lichtenberg sacked there by Lee Koba, the senior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Typically, Cincinnati's offensive line is able to get it done, a veteran group. But Lee Koba, just being relentless with his rush, is able to get after. As you can see, you know, this Mountaineer defense right now hasn't seen anything from Cincinnati offensively. So they're able to be aggressive on the defense and play man-to-man -man coverage because the wide receivers are not getting open down the field. Lichtenberg to keep it off right tackle. Staying on his feet, trying to reach forwards towards the first down marker. He'll be just shy as Malachi Ruffin went for a ride there as he was trying to take down Lichtenberg, a 14-yard gain. And are they going to give him the first down? Yes, they are, it looks like. Yeah, they've, they've changed the marker to a first down. So, yes, the chains are moving. So call it 15 officially for Lichtenberg. A good run there. A true quarterback run, something that you don't typically see out of Brady Lichtenberg. But I love this for this Cincinnati offense because you just gave West Virginia an added layer to look at when Brady Lichtenberg is in the game. Lichtenberg takes the snap, got plenty of time, fires over the middle, and it is almost intercepted. Malachi Ruffin couldn't haul it in. Let's check in with Maryland. The two quarterback system for the Bearcats is something that OC Brad Glenn says is unorthodox, but for us it works because of the, the mental part of it. He says the competition between the two helps each one be better, and in particular, he said Brady Lichtenberg behind Emory Jones. It relieves pressure off Jones, and Lichtenberg so reliable for us. You see that in the demeanor that both quarterbacks have on the sideline, the competition as well as even Keelness. Hand off on the right side, and Kiner hurdles a defender. Picks up seven yards on that one. Beanie Bishop, the man that got hurdled on that one. Corey Kiner, are you kidding me? He's normally their bruiser, but he's showing some athleticism right there, trying to go over Beanie Bishop. A great run by that young man to bring up third and, me and, and three. Cincinnati 0 for 4 on third downs today. Oklahoma with a win against BYU earlier. Kiner up the middle. Plenty of room there and picks up the first down to the 40-yard line. 
excellent gain, seven yards. Hershey McLaurin. Hershey McLaurin brought him down. This has been so far the most successful drive for Cincinnati today. Nice mixture of throws and passes, but I love the fact that they're leaning on Corey Kiner, their big bruiser, allowing him to bring some physicality. Balls on the ground. Oh, and he's able to get it back, Lions Montgomery. Montgomery, the ball Montgomery gets his own fumble. That one, lucky to bounce right back at him. Run down by Sean Martin. Right now, that's not what you need if you're Cincinnati, right? Everybody okay. needs to be protecting that football. What a lucky bounce there. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Montgomery, Montgomery definitely came up lucky on that one. Sean Martin with the tackle. Montgomery back in the backfield, second and ten. Lichtenberg had been practicing well, as Marilyn told you earlier, and had been pushing Emory Jones for playing time and getting a lot of it here. And we've got whistles. Two left for Cincinnati. West Virginia with one timeout. Under two minutes. Remember, for those that are just tuning in, we go back to the traditional college football rules of... Under two minutes, we go back to the official or the traditional college football rules in the second and fourth quarter of a of the clock stopping after every first down. So Lichtenberg doing his thing on one end, but the story today has been Garrett Green for West Virginia. He has done it all, Orlando. Yeah, he's came out, used his legs to help back off some of that pressure from the Cincinnati defense and help ease it in the passing game as well. But he's doing what he does best, and that is fine increases with his legs, using his legs as a check down, being explosive. But he's also been fitting some tight throws out there as well down the field. Green, four for eight for 120 yards and a touchdown through the air. Eight carries for 80 yards and a rushing TD. And the ball's on the ground again. Lichtenberg picks it up, dumps it off over the middle to Evan Prater, who picks up the first down and pushed out of bounds inside the 20-yard line by Aubrey Burks. Not the way Scott Satterfield drew it up, but successful nonetheless. And now that is the second snap by center Gavin Gerhardt that has, hasn't been on the money to the quarterback. But Brady Lichtenberg does a heck of a job getting that football, getting his eyes down the field to be able to complete it and create an explosive in the passing game. 22-yard gain, 10th play of the drive for Cincinnati. In the red zone. Lichtenberg to keep it. Lichtenberg. Got room. Dives forward near the goal line. He'll be just shy. Picks up. 17 on that one. Anthony Wilson finally brought him down, and Cincinnati in business here late in the second quarter. First down. I love what the offensive coordinator Brad Glenn is doing here. Calling up some design quarterback runs for Brady Lickenberg. It doesn't have to be just Angry Jones out there. He's given West Virginia something to think about, also with the quarterback that, that could do something. Uh, added layer with this arm West and throwing Virginia the football. Has called their third and final charge timeout. One. I think that's a. As we see Lichtenberg with the nifty run here, I like the timeout by West Virginia here to regroup. Yeah, can't keep him with you, right? I mean, this is right now. They're inside the five. They're right there on the goal line. You take the time out to be able to sub and make sure you get the best personnel grouping out there to try to keep Cincinnati out the end zone right now. What are you talking about? Let's start with Cincinnati. What is their sideline discussing at the moment? If I'm Cincinnati, I'm doing the same thing that I just did, George. I'm going to spread this thing out, and I'm letting Brady Lickenberg pull that football down and run another quarterback drop. That's been the most successful play right now, and that's what West Virginia has not been able to, to cover. You have to get points. You have to make sure that you get seven instead of three right now being in the red zone. And don't forget, Cincinnati will get the ball to start the third quarter because West Virginia won the toss and received. What did you say to your team if you were West Virginia quickly? Right here, if we could hold them, 
Let's hold them. Let's play man to man and try to get after the quarterback and affect the quarterback as much as possible. Cincinnati with a quarterback change, putting Emory Jones back in there. And I also like this because of the RPOs and what he brings in the run game. And a false start by Cincinnati. It's been the story of the game for Cincinnati. Self-inflicted wounds, penalties. They're discussing it, though, which makes me believe that maybe a West Virginia person said something. Delay a game. Defense number 93, half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Wow. Mike Lockhart, the redshirt junior from Birmingham, Alabama, Georgia, Alabama, rather, uh, Georgia Tech transfer. I haven't seen delay of game on defense very often. You don't see that one every day. Yeah, and um, Coach Neil Brown, he's not playing around. He's got him out of there right away because of that. Jones under center. The tush push gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Emory Jones gives Cincinnati new life. Emory Jones. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season, 19th overall, a one-yard plunge into the end zone. One minute, 32 seconds left in the second quarter. I like this call by offensive coordinator Brad Glenn. You have a veteran offensive line, guys that have played all of the games so far this year together. This group of five have been out there to play every single snap. Put it on the big boys to try to get you back into this game. So a great job right there. And I like how they were able to use both quarterbacks on that drive as well. 11 plays, 75 yards, 4 minutes and 35 seconds off the clock. Carter Brown for the extra point. season and make it 27 for 27. Scott Satterfield and company clawed their way back into this one. A little bit out of the Philadelphia Eagles playbook with the tush push, but I like it. Able to gain some momentum on a football play that's very hard to stop. So I like what Cincinnati was able to do here. I like that last drive for them. It was 11 plays, 75 yards, 4 minutes and 35 seconds. There were some throws, some runs that were able to get them to the end zone. And guys had to do what they were supposed to do, George. Wide receivers getting open versus man-to-man -man coverage. Tight ends being able to create some separation. Brady Lichtenberg going out there, throwing the football. And both quarterbacks having some success on that drive. Lichtenberg starting it off, but Emory Jones finishing it off in the end zone. Certainly the best drive they've had all day today. It's not even a question. It took them a little bit to get going because West Virginia had them all out of sorts to begin this one. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And they've given themselves new life here in the first half. Can they find a way to play some complimentary football now? Offense did their job, was able to go and find success right before the halftime. Now defense, can you get a stop? Nathan Hawks kicks it off through the end zone. West Virginia will begin their next drive at their own 25-yard line. You see Coach Brown talking to Garrett Green. Green, as I mentioned, 200 total yards today, two touchdowns. When they talked to us before the game, yesterday in our coaches meetings they wanted green to have at least 200 yards in the air and taking some shots down the field they've done that successfully check and check and we'll see what this drive looks like if they go for it here they go conservative jaheem white in the backfield green gonna run it himself lots of space there a lot of green grass, and he slides down as he gets into Cincinnati territory at the 45-yard line. A 30-yard run for a first down for Garrett Green. He's got 110 yards on the ground. Green takes a shot. 
to the sideline. Another first down. This one to Cole Taylor, the big tight end. His 27th reception of the season. A 15-yard gain for the first down. Yeah, tight end Cole Taylor, 6'7 body frame. He just runs a nice out route and is able to get wide open for a nice haul on the sidelines right there. Garrett Green continues to use his eyes to manipulate coverage on the back end for Cincinnati, moving safeties and being able to put the ball anywhere he wants to put it on the field. Green, a tough one last week against Oklahoma. He is bouncing back in a big way in this one. Zips one again to the sideline, again to Cole Taylor. And picks up about four yards. Two-yard gain. Actually, they'll give him only two on that one. I'm wondering if we'll see the quarterback draw at some point again that we just saw a couple plays ago. Green keeps it, makes a man miss, and he's headed to the end zone. Looking back. At the Cincinnati defense saying, you can't catch me. 26-yard touchdown run for Garrett Green. And this young man has taken complete control of this contest. It has been all Garrett Green show today, whether it's been him being spectacular throwing the football, but just on this last one, having a great feel, under, understanding Ja'Juan Ju Briggs and how Cincinnati plays their defense, that their defensive ends are gonna squeeze backside. So being able to pull it, that's gonna be there all day. And Garrett Green explodes in the open field to score that next to another touchdown. Four plays, 75 yards, 52 seconds. That's the second touchdown drive of under a minute in this contest today. They have been a quick strike offense, Orlando. Yeah, and Garrett Green just making guys miss out in space and using his legs. When you have a quarterback, their check down is their legs. But I like what Chad Scott, offensive coordinator, is doing. He's allowing his quarterback to run. Yesterday, talking to Neil Brown and, and Chad Scott, when you have running quarterbacks, they say that you like to call at least 9 to 11 call it up design quarterback runs a game. With the way Garrett Green has played today, I don't know that you only get to 11 and, and stop calling it. You might call more. Six plays of over 20 yards, four runs of over 10 yards for West Virginia. Garrett Green, 136 yards on the ground, 139 through the air. It has been his show. Had a season high as well. His touchdown to Jaheim White earlier, 75 yards. That was a season high also. Garrett Green is feeling himself today. No doubt. Boy, came off his worst game of the season, so you know he wanted to show out today for sure. Yeah, the junior from Tallahassee is having a nice bounce back, but sending the seniors off the right way here on senior day today. There's Green. I mentioned the numbers earlier. Three total touchdowns. Man, if you were Coach Satterfield in Cincinnati, the last drive, you didn't even expect to get the ball back. But as quick as West Virginia was just able to score, I think if you're Cincinnati being down three scores right now, you, you cannot kneel this thing and go into halftime. You might have to try to figure out a way to take a shot or two. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. You saw that West Virginia has one of the best rushing offenses in the country, averaging nearly 214 yards. And they have 199 before the half already. Jones in at quarterback now. He's got time on the run to the sideline, incomplete, intended for Braden Smith. A prevent defense right now for West Virginia all the way. Rushing three, dropping eight, just not allowing anybody from Cincinnati to get over the top or behind them. Montgomery in the backfield. Ryan Montgomery, that is. There's two Montgomerys. Got to be careful here if you're Cincinnati. You can't just think you're going to throw it and get to halftime. You got to make sure you get a first down at least. Get that clock to move. Jones underneath to Ryan Montgomery. Marcus Floyd pushes him out of bounds. 25 seconds left on the clock. 
right now, if I'm offensive coordinator Brad Glenn, I got to call my best third and eight play that I have on my call sheet up because I have to find a way to get a first down right here. I do not want to punt it back to this West Virginia offense that's been explosive here in the first half. Let's see what they draw up. It looks like Jones will keep it. Jones gets enough for the first down, it looks like. Floyd upends him near the 35-yard line, and they will give him the first down. That will clock stop the clock, rather, momentarily. Do you clock it here if you're them, or you keep going? I think they're just going to keep on. They're going to try to get a shot, but West Virginia is not allowing anybody to get behind them. Jones throws it away smartly, but takes off a lot of time off that clock. Probably needed to make that decision sooner. Yeah. I know you're kind of in a tough spot. You want to get the ball down the field to your point earlier, but if there's nothing there, you got to throw it away. You got to get out of there and throw it away if you have. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Cincinnati's offense, the wide receivers particularly, they just have not stretched the field how they normally do. Whether that's West Virginia being able to, to scheme it up where they're not able to do that, but Cincinnati has to find a way to find success being able to push the ball down the field. Jones underneath. And that'll do it for the first half. Ryan Montgomery with the catch there, but to no avail as Cincinnati only seven points in the first half. Meanwhile, West Virginia has been rolling. What do you like most of what you see from West Virginia? Find its success with the passing game. We know that West Virginia was going to come in and run the football, and they've continued to do that. But Garrett Green has found a way to find success in the air today. Let's send it down to Maryland with Neil. How can your offense continue to be as effective as it has been this first half and the second? Well, I think early in the third quarter is going to be vital. You know, we've been able to mix it up pretty well. You know, Garrett's coming out and playing. Just like I told you, I thought before the game, I thought he would play really well. He's doing that. we got to take care of the football, and we got to continue to stay balanced. Uh, I thought our guys up front are really the, the story so far. They're winning that battle up front. And how are they doing it as well on defense up front? Well, here's the thing. Like, our guys were embarrassed about how we played last week. And we played relatively good defense all year. And our guys are really, they're hungry today. And this is a good offense. You know, we held a good, really good offense in check for the first half. I know Scott Satterfield, he's a great offensive coach. Not a good, he's a great offensive coach. We're going to see some different looks in the second half, and we got to be able to handle them. Again, first drive is going to be critical. Thanks for the time. Yep, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Marilyn and Coach Neal. Coach Nealon immortalized, as you saw there, and they are doing him justice today. Showing out for the old ball coach here in West Virginia. The Mountaineers up big in the first half. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, where the home team is in control, and that dude is way more brave than you and me, Orlando, because he is basically shirtless almost, and we are freezing up here in this booth, but the fans having a good time today. Cincinnati, though, not having as great a time at the moment. Yeah, just looking at what Cincinnati has done in the first half, playing both quarterbacks, Emory Jones and, and Brady Lightenberg, they have to find a way to find success on the earlier downs and stay ahead of down and distance. You look at Emory Jones, their quarterback, he has had seven completions today, and one of those went for 16 yards. That means six of his completions were, have went for 20, a total of 20 yards. They have to figure out a way to get a deep threat down the field, and guys have to come up big for these two quarterbacks in order to fight their way back into this one. Kickoff here, and a fair catch. And let's check in with Maryland. Scott Satterfield said, look, I don't care how we do it. We just have to find a way to be more effective on offense. He said, whether it's running or passing, we've got to be more effective up front so we can get our, our game going, whatever that looks like. And he said it will be a mix of both. On defense, he said it's about containing Garrett Green. We have to have somebody in the box to account for him at all times. He's gashing us, and it's got to stop. 
So what do you think, Orlando? How plausible is that? I think offensively, you got to get back to doing what you do best. I know you're down three scores, but there's still a lot of football, so you can mix it, the run game in with the passing game. But when you do go to the passing game, guys have to come up big. Jones play action to the sideline, complete to Xavier Henderson. Henderson with a nice gain on first down. And Xavier Henderson is going to be one of those deep threats for this Cincinnati offense. A nice little comeback route right there, but an easy catch for him to help build some confidence in Emory Jones at the quarterback position. Second and one for Cincinnati, trying to get something going desperately here to begin the second half. To Kiner on the right side, drags a defender for the first down. Excellent work there as Ben Cutter, the freshman, got dragged on that play a first down and I like that right there a nice nine yard pass to come out second and one give it to your big back Corey Connor let him impose his will in the run game that's what it's got to be moving forward for the rest of the game for Cincinnati and a little bit of tempo as we're seeing as well right now got to do something different for sure curious to see how they play the rest of this half. play action a shot Incomplete intended for Donovan Ali, the Washington State transfer. Not a lot of touches for him this year because of the depth at wide receiver, but that one sailed over his head. Yeah, so he's he has great ball skills, Donovan Ali, and he's a guy that this coaching staff tries to force feed him, tries to get him touches right there. If you're Emory Jones, you want that one back because he was wide open. There's no excuse for that incomplete pass right there. Second and ten. From the 37. Hand off. And not much there. Lee Koba, the vocal leader of that defense with the tackle, only a one yard gain. They love Koba, man. He is the quarterback of that defense, emotional leader, vocal leader. And he came full circle coming back to West Virginia. He initially chose West Virginia out of high school, but then there was a coaching change. Was at Syracuse briefly and then a Juco player and then back here at West Virginia. So good to see him back for the Mountaineers. Third and nine for Cincinnati. Jones over the middle. Nice snag there. Xavier Henderson. First down for Cincinnati. Beanie Bishop in coverage. Good coverage as well, but just a better catch. Yeah, unbelievable coverage by Beanie Bishop. But Xavier Henderson goes out and snatches that one out of the air. A great catch. Great reliable hands right there for, with the with Henderson. First and ten from the 48 yard line. Oof, a tough hit. Marcus Floyd put on Emory Jones. Emory Jones with a two yard gain to the 50 yard line. See, that one's interesting for me right there. It's first and 10. This is a big shot that Emory Jones takes right here. You don't want to see your quarterback taking unnecessary hits. I'm surprised that Brad Glenn, offensive coordinator, didn't try to go to the air on that last one. Jones with time. Throws off his back foot and sails it over the head of his intended target, Xavier Henderson. Another frustrated one where Xavier Henderson is open. He has created some separation. He's at the bottom of the screen right here, works up top, is able to put his foot down, come back to the football, but Amory Jones just sails that one over his head. Third and eight for Cincinnati. Crowd getting behind the defense, pressure coming. Cincinnati does a great job of picking it up, throws off his back foot, incomplete, dangerous pass. Marcus Floyd knocks it out of the receiver's hands there as the receiver was able to get at least one paw on it. Amory Jones surveying the field, tries to go back, but as you could see, two guys for West Virginia right there to try to contest that. And Marcus Floyd is able to get his hand up to create an incomplete pass. The intended target was D. Wiggins, former Miami player and transfer from Louisville. It was with Scott Satterfield there. The punt, Louisville. 
Fox to fair catch it at the 12. And West Virginia will begin their next drive there. A 38-yard punt, no return. The Mountaineers in control in the third quarter. West Virginia University, Don Knotts, actor, comedian, Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show. I knew him on Three's Company as Mr. Furley. I'm, uh, I'm a little too young for Barney Fife, but Mr. Furley, I, I vaguely remember as a six and seven year old back in those days. Look at this guy, man. That is dedication to your team because I am freezing up here. Me and you. Now you're Canadian originally. I know you haven't lived there in a long time, but this cold is, e is even tough for you today. Yeah, but it was summertime here in West Virginia yesterday. It was in the 70s. It was nice yesterday. Green over the middle fires. It is caught and completed to Preston Fox, the Morgantown native with a first down as he's taken down at the 28-yard line, a 16-yard gain. A beautiful pass by Garrett Green right here. Right as Preston Fox is able to come out of his break, the football is there on time and right in the numbers. Great pitch and catch by Garrett Green. You had no idea who Don Knotts was though, right? Oh, I knew from Three is Company, not the Andy Griffin show. I, did, I had no idea. That was You'd at least see Three's Company in syndication is what you're saying, yes. I've seen it and then turned it off. I was like, what, what in the world is this? <laughs> um, but, you know, I have been able to do a lot of research this year okay. and, and brush up on my, my old sitcom knowledge. Okay, I like sure. that. I like that, partner. Rodney Gallagher with the pickup there of seven. On the wide receiver screen, Jordan Young pushed him out of bounds. Second down and three coming up. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, Maryland Payne with you here. Maryland, you got something? My dad's T-shirt that was my favorite as a child had four pictures of Don Knotts as Barney on it. I texted him this week to ask if he didn't still has it, and he doesn't. I was heartbroken. <laughs> well, there you have it. Cincinnati showing blitz. White on the left side. Stiff arming a defender, picks up the first down and then some as he's taken down at the 43 yard line, an eight yard gain for the freshman. West Virginia continues with their window dressing. Lots of motion, lots of guys pulling. They're going to always give you a lot to see. But Jaheim White, just an unbelievable stiff arm right there for the young man. The freshman just continues to add more and more things to his belts of tricks. But credit to Taj Ward, the stiff arm nonetheless, he still made the tackle. Yes, but Jaheim White, a little bit extra yardage, right? So anything you can do to get more. And there we see some room by Jaheim White on the left side again, working that left side down to the 40-yard line. A gain of 17 on the play. Naeem White just continues to show what he could do in the open field, making guys miss. As you see, Deshaun Pace with the tackle. But he continues to get to that, that third level easily. It seems like every other play for Cincinnati, it's their secondary making tackles. you got to get more from your front seven if you're going to be able to stay in this game. West Virginia with six plays of 20 yards or more, now five run plays of over 10 yards. White again, slips out of a tackle and taken down inside the 35-yard line. A gain of about five and a half, we'll call it six. Let's check in with Maryland. West Virginia run game coordinator and co-OC's Chad Scott said as good as Shaheen White is, he is really progressing in the way that he pays attention to the details. The way that his feet work, waiting for holes to open up for him. He said, C.J. Donaldson's been bringing him in during the open hours. He said earlier this week, he said, hey, look who I've got here with me. And it was Jaheim just working on becoming an even better back. You got to love the camaraderie at the position groups. Green, play action, pressure coming up the middle. Sails it too high for Devin Carter. He had him open, certainly there over the middle. Devin Carter was open by a mile. I know Garrett Green wants that one back because Devin Carter is able to get open in the middle of the field and he sails it about a foot over his head on that one. Dante Corleone with the pressure up the middle. He was pushing that offensive lineman into the face of Garrett Green. Third and four for the Mountaineers. 34 yard line, Cincinnati showing blitz. Light trickles forward, picks up the first down, down to the 26 yard line. Taj Ward able to bring him down after an eight yard gain. 
Jaheim White just shows that he has a great grasp of just running in between the tackles. To add to what Maryland was saying about offensive coordinator Chad Scott, he said Jaheim White is their, his third and short back because when you get to third and long, colleges do a lot of exotic blitzes and the freshman hasn't seen a lot of those. But today he's been spot on the money in the red game and, you know, running routes as well for this Mountaineer offense. First and 10. Jet sweep by Gallagher. And drop down at the 30. Check that, the 24-yard line. Rob Jackson brings it down. Rob Jackson makes the play, but Taj Ward did an excellent job being able to set the edge and force it back inside where his help is coming on that defense. Green changing the play on second and eight. Carter in motion. A screen pass there to Fox. And Fox taken down at the 18-yard line. Will be about two yards shy of the first down, a six-yard gain for Fox, the Morgantown native. He is very consistent. They love him in that intermediate passing game in the slot. Yeah, he's been big for this West Virginia offense all year. Deshaun Pace, big for Cincinnati's defense because he doesn't make that tackle. Preston Fox scores on that last play. West Virginia four for seven on third downs. Facing third and two. Donaldson checks in, pushes forward, and has enough for the first down. Down to the 15. That offensive line, particularly the middle of that offensive line, is the strength of this team, Orlando. Yeah, big Zach Frazier getting it done right there giving C.J. Donaldson just a little bit of that hold that he needed to move the chains on that third and two. This offensive line is powered by Zach Frazier. The big man up front has taken care of business for um, this Mountaineer offense for the last couple of years. Big underside, wasn't heavily recruited coming out of high school, but has turned into one of the better centers in the country. Went to a small high school here with about 600 total students. Donaldson wrapped up in the backfield. And you would think with a school that small as far as student population there would be a ton of athletes coming out there but there's a number of d1 athletes from his high school let's check in with maryland on more on that as good as zach frazier is on the field he's better on the sidelines at communicating in particular today staying with jaquay hubbard at right guard as he takes on the double team against dante corleone he's, he's working on him with his hands frazier is he's telling hubbard his teammate kind of what to expect, how to stay consistent, and what to do against the power that they're facing at nose tackle. There's no doubt. Port Leon is the godfather of that defense. Green with the keeper, stutter steps, tries to break outside, dives forward towards the end zone, another touchdown for Garrett Green! 18 yards! Garrett Green, have yourself a day, young fella. His third touchdown on the ground. Just taking advantage of how Cincinnati plays defensively, knowing that the end man on the line of scrimmage is going to chase the tackle when he sees tackle away. But Garrett Green does an even better job when he gets to the open space, being able to now fake out defenders and make them think that he's going one way and able to dip back out to the outside and use his legs and use that speed to, to draw away from people. Extra point is up and good. 12 plays, 88 yards, 7 minutes and 9 seconds off the clock. Frazier and the big boys up front paving the way for Garrett Green for his third rushing touchdown of the day. Total domination by West Virginia here on Senior Day in Morgantown. Scott Satterfield, no answers at the moment.
Yeah, they've taken care of business offensively, as you could see, 35 points on the board. But I think the story that not a lot of people are talking about, George, is what West Virginia's defense has been able to do. They've come in and they have smothered a team that's been a top 10 team in running the football and given Cincinnati nowhere to go and no options to go to anything. So great job by West Virginia just playing complimentary football today. Kickoff is fair caught by Xavier Henderson. And we will be back in a moment and see how Cincinnati tries to claw their way back into this one. Welcome back to Morgantown, the home team in total control. Scott Satterfield in Cincinnati looking for answers, Orlando. Yeah, it's been miscues offensively and also penalties for this team. You have to find a way just to go out there and find a drive where there isn't any of those. Jones in trouble, flushed out of the pocket, throws on the run off his back foot, incomplete. A dangerous pass there as Hawkins put the pressure on him. Yeah, it just comes Scott up uh, off the edge right there. And West Virginia being able to be very aggressive because Cincinnati hasn't done anything offensively or force them to play coverage on the back end. So they're able to play man-to-man -man coverage on the back end and blitz every single down if they want to. Second and 10 for the Bearcats. Hand off. Montgomery makes a man miss and then taken down at the 29-yard line. A four-yard gain. Anthony Wilson and Ben Cutter there to stop him after that four-yard gain. A little bit of a better situation here for Cincinnati offensively, bringing up third and six. You know, there's a lot of the playbook that's up in a situation like this, being that it's only six yards to get a first down and move the chains. They need to get something going soon because they're not really built to come from behind. Jones. Plenty of time over the middle. It is incomplete, too high for his receiver, Xavier Henderson. Henderson tried to climb the ladder but could not haul it in. The pass off target. Anthony Xavier Wilson in coverage. Xavier Henderson is 6'3". You know, that's not a short wide receiver. And you can see Emory Jones fires that one and it's a little high. He could have put that one on his body and give Xavier Henderson a little bit more of an opportunity. You're making it easier for defensemen like Anthony Wilson to make a play on the football when you don't put it in a better catch radius for your wide receivers. Cincinnati forced to punt. Short punt takes a Cincinnati bounce. Just shy of the 25 yard line. Let's take a look at some of the scores around the conference. Oklahoma took care of business. That's the only early game. Couple in action at the moment as TCU leading Baylor. Oklahoma State, who lost to UCF, is down to Houston, who lost to Cincinnati last week. And then later on, we've got Central Florida and Texas Tech, Kansas State and Kansas. That one a battle for sure, and Texas at Iowa State. Got to love Big 12 football, right? I mean, each and every week it's a roller coaster ride. You have no idea what's going to happen in this conference until Sunday morning when you wake up and look at all the scores. <laughs> no doubt about that. Garrett Green doing a heck of a job today. Under pressure, avoids the pressure there, throws on the run down the sideline, caught and complete to his tight end, Cole Taylor, for a first down near midfield there are no answers for this cincinnati defense just when you think that garrett green's going to be able to get sacked right there by jordan young he's able to elude the pressure and push the ball down the field for another explosive in the air 20 yard gain for taylor ball is on the 46 yard line green has done it in the air and on the ground on the ground, he's got his 11th rushing TD of the season after three touchdowns today. Tied for second, or rather, second most in the country. Green in the air again. Fires and complete to Devin Carter inside the 35-yard line. Byron threats in coverage. An excellent play there. 20-yard gain to Carter. 
Devin Carter, welcome to the party. Great feel for the zone that the defense is playing with that too high shell. But Garrett Green continues to show you that he could dice this defense up. If I'm Coach Neil Brown, I'm feeling really good about how my quarterback is finishing off this season right now, showing some promise for sure. Green on first and 10, Cincinnati showing blitz off the corner. West Virginia picks it up, and pressure comes from the other side and incomplete. Green smartly throws it away, intended for Devin Carter. And for more on Carter, let's check in with Maryland. Carter is arguably the most emotional and in a good way player on this West Virginia sideline since the very first drive when the Mountain Ears did not score. He was frustrated. He has been energized. You see him get as high as possible off the teammates plays and he's been excited um, for the Mountaineers since then. But to see him get that catch right there is a is a great feeling for the teammates along the sideline and, and for him the way that he's been so invested today. Thank you Marilyn. Carter has just the one catch today for 20 yards, but he is the prime target for sure. And a good one here, still churning the legs, keeps the legs moving. Jaheim White drags Malik Van, and Jaheim White, the freshman, making the most of this first start of his career, 14-yard gain. Yeah, great job by Jaheim White, but an even better job by Zach Frazier because oh, right, Zach yeah, Frazier is able to stick on his guy, Malik Van, for about another seven yards down the field to just keep Jaheim White going and going to be able to turn those legs. Another red zone opportunity for West Virginia upcoming. Jaheim White showing his explosive ability. We talked to offensive coordinator Chad Scott earlier in the week, and he talked about Jaheim gets one opportunity when it comes to the goal line. And right now, being right about the five yard line, let's see if this is his one opportunity to get in the end zone if he gets to, if he gets another crack at it running the football. He's still on the field, so this is his crack. He has gotten into the end zone, but again, that was from further away. Davis in motion. They give it to White up the middle. Slips past the defender and into the end zone for the touchdown. He gets his opportunity and he capitalizes on it. A four-yard plunge for Jaheim White, the freshman from York, Pennsylvania. He gets his third touchdown of the season. Check that. Yes, his third, 109 yards on the ground for the young freshman. Didn't that look like a play of a guy that might only be getting one opportunity down there? He looks like he has stopped dead in his tracks right around about the three-yard line. Keeps those feet turning and is able to get in the end zone. Heck of a day by that young man on his first career start. The extra point by Hayes is up and good. Six plays, 74 yards, three minutes and eight seconds off the clock. Capped off by a white touchdown. Naeem White looks like he is dead to right by Dante Corleone, but he's able to continue to turn his feet and back his way into the end zone. Great job by that young man right there. He's having himself a day for sure. This West Virginia offense has been potent for sure. Let's check in with Maryland. That's a particularly huge moment for Jaheim White because Chad Scott said, I'm going to put him in at the goal line for the first time, and I told him, you got to go score. That's the way that relationship has gone between these two. Chad Scott challenging the young running back progressively, saying, hey, I'm going to put you in on, on different scenarios, and when I do, you have to go execute. This the latest in that development as Jaheim White continues to just get better for these Mountaineers. Absolutely, Maryland. He is taking on the task for sure and he is acing the test right now 
And what I love about this Mountaineers team partner is the fact that you saw Jaheim White score and he went right to CJ Donaldson. And those two guys had a quick conversation. Staying in the game, rooting for each other. A nice one two combo. Braden Smith called for the fair catch, then fumbled it and picked it up. And the officials are like, no, no, buddy. That's not how that works. As Jaheim breaking it down on the sidelines. Uh, West Virginia, by the way, again, as I mentioned, just dominant on offense today. Eight possessions, six TDs. One missed field goal and only one punt. 31 seconds left in the third quarter as they are having a ball on the sidelines for the Mountaineers. Emory Jones coming back out. We haven't seen Brady Lichtenberg in a while. Are you surprised? No, I'm not surprised at all. You know, in a game like this, you you're already down big. You want as much familiarity as possible offensively to try to get by in the end zone. So I'm not surprised that they're going with Emory Jones. So Jones starts the drive at the nine yard line because that's where he fumbled the ball. And he picks up, or check that at the four yard line is where he fumbled the ball. So the ball is now on the nine after the five yard game. Corey Kiner in the backfield. And you saw there a moment ago, the backup quarterback, Nico Marchio, warming up for West Virginia. Will we see him in the fourth quarter? Maybe, because the first team offense has been dominant. On the ground, in the air, you name it, they've done it. West Virginia. honored here at the stadium earlier he joined us in the second quarter and he's got to be smiling from ear to ear he was certainly smiling in the booth with us earlier but more so now with a 42 7 lead for the home team on senior day toss to the outside to Xavier Henderson Henderson picks up the first down from the 20 yard line a gain of 11 Great job by Emory Jones, just recognizing all coverage on Xavier Henderson right there, able to get him the ball as fast as possible for a nice, easy first down. Kiner in the backfield. 500 total yards for West Virginia. Kiner dancing and picks up one. Cincinnati this year, and this is not reflective of their season, has mostly outgained opponents by almost 100 yards on average this season. And turnovers have been a big problem for them this year. But in this game, they've just been dominated. There's really no other way to describe it, Orlando. Yeah, dominated with some self-inflicted wounds and just miscues where quarterback oh, connect. Lockhart just sped right through the gap and took down Emory Jones. He had no chance. Mike Lockhart, the big 6'3", 308-pound nose tackle, able to come right up the middle and make Emory Jones pay right there. Third and 15. The junior from Birmingham, Alabama. Got to be happy about his sack. That's his second sack of the season. Jones to the sideline. Caught. And Xavier Henderson has room to run down the sidelines. Staying on his feet and pushed out of bounds. After a monster gain, Aubrey Burks pushes him out of bounds after a 55-yard gain and finally an explosive play for Cincinnati. The ball's on time to Xavier Henderson right here. He's able to get his eyes around, catch the football, and turn back and see where the defense is collapsing down. Sees two defenders, splits them, and is able to get off to the races. Great job by Xavier Henderson. Raleigh Collins missed the tackle on Henderson. Cincinnati down to the 30-yard line. And some trickery here. A double reverse. Jones down the field. Has a man wide open for the touchdown. It's the tight end. Matea with the score of 30-yard pitch and catch from Emory Jones. And Cincinnati 
showing some life after that 30 yard score. This one, Brad Glenn, offensive coordinator, goes in his bag with the double reverse and is able to find the tight end just leaking out of the backfield. Cameron does a heck of a job of stock blocking coming out of the backfield where he's not able to buy one of the defenders for West Virginia. Just a great design play right there. Nice, easy touchdown for Cincinnati. And at this point, I don't know, I don't believe they can get back in the game necessarily. Now, stranger things have happened, but there's just not a lot of time on the clock. They would need a lot of things to go their way. But right there, that's a positive momentum for this Cincinnati team on a day where it just hasn't been very positive for them. The battle of the mascots are on. The battle of the field, not as competitive as the battle of the mascots at the moment. That last drive by Cincinnati, six plays, 96 yards, three minutes and two seconds off the clock, and a touchdown pass from Emory Jones to their tight end, Mateo. Orlando Franklin is my analyst. I'm George Sedano, Maryland Payne, down on the sidelines with you. Happy to bring you this one from Morgantown on senior down. Fair catch. Let's go down to Maryland. Some remarkable details on the musket that he is holding there, stamped in coal, the WV logo etched in gold. It says, take me home country roads. On the flip side of the musket, you have more fine details, including a gold outline and cutout of a mountaineer shooting a musket straight up into the air, as well as the outline of the state here, West Virginia, with the WV in the center. I mean, it's just the fine details that really send that one home for me. That's what I did during halftime, if you guys are wondering. <laughs> we see, Maryland. You know my history with the mascots, right? Yeah, well, I know, trust me. Our first game <laughs> against, uh, with Syracuse, you and the Orange are doing a great job, Otto. And speaking of great jobs, Jaheim White continues a great day today. Another big run for Jaheim White. 21 yards on that play. Yeah, Jaheim White just continues to show why he is a special back and why he's going to only continue to get better and better, keeping his head into this one the whole entire way, even after already having a career day so far in the fourth quarter. Keep it rolling, young fella. Keep it rolling. Jaheim White. 130 yards on the ground. Nine rushes, or nine, excuse me, plays of over 20 plus yards for West Virginia. White again up the middle. White getting past the defender into the open field. It's a foot race, and he's dragged down near the five yard line by Deshaun Pace. White, man, you have had a day, young fella. Four Seven yards for Jaheim White on that run. Yeah, they were able to get an explosive run into the left to play before, so let's try going to the right on the, the, the next coming play. And he's able to burst one open in the middle of the field again. A heck of a job by Jaheim White. But an even better job with this offensive line. They continue to take care of business. 360 rushing yards today for this Mountaineer offense. Oh, it's got to make you proud as a former offensive lineman to see those numbers. Absolutely. Even with this weather as well, it's football weather. Offense, five-yard penalty. First down. First down. And a rare miscue for West Virginia today. Only their third penalty of the day. A little too much celebrating. Guys didn't get back to the huddle in time. Got to make sure you keep your head in this thing. If you're head coach Neil Brown, this is where you don't want to see your team mess up, right? You want to see you this everybody finish strong and continue to keep your foot on the gas pedal. First and goal from the 12. Fans chanting, getting into this one. White. This time stood up at the 10 yard line. Two yard gain. Corleone, the man at the point of attack. 
Yeah, he's been really good for this defense today. Dante Corleone, big number two. It's been the miscues from the other guys. The missed tackles in the secondary have really hurt this Cincinnati football team today. But it's nice to see that big Dante Corleone, his head is still in this one, and he's still fighting. Great play action. Receiver screen to Fox. Short gain. Third down upcoming. Two-yard gain for Fox. Daniel Gresham with the absolute huge hit right here as Fox catches the ball and tries to turn up field. He's been all over the field, sideline to sideline today, but it just hasn't been enough. Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles. Gresham. Green, plenty of room. He's going to throw on the run to the back of the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown to Cole Taylor. Cole Taylor. His big tight end. That's what he's there for, a red zone target. And you see. Personal foul tripping, number 22, offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. That's Jaheim White with the infraction. Let's take a look at that one as Pace is on the ground. Yeah, Deshaun Pace comes on the blitz, oh. and Jaheim White tries to go low, and he sees that Pace is adjusting, so he tries to leg whip out there, and just and Pace ends up getting hurt on this one. You never want to see that. That's where you see the Jaheim White being young, right? And that's where he will get better. The more football he plays, he'll be able to anticipate where blitzers are going a little bit better and not create that infraction and take points off the board. Yeah, you can't do that. We'll pause to see how Pace is doing. He's on his feet. We'll be back in a moment. Been leading big here. And the penalty on the freshman Jaheim Hines or excuse me, Jaheim White, rather, puts the West Virginia offense back on the field and takes the touchdown off the board. Justin Johnson in the backfield now. White, plenty of time. Launches one over the middle, too high, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Ken Willis. And that one had no chance as there were a lot of white shirts in the area. A rare time today where Cincinnati has been able to kind of force West Virginia in a situation where you know they're throwing the ball. Ken Willis does a heck of a job of just reading Garrett Green's eyes all the way right there to create an interception for this Cincinnati football team. First turnover of the game. Coach Brown is not happy as he had some choice words there. Emory Jones back on the field. Jones with time. A deep shot down the field. Incomplete as Xavier Henderson had to go back for it, but could not haul it in. Underthrown by Jones. Yeah, Xavier Henderson definitely had a step on Beanie Bishop on this one. He looks like he tries to work back to the football. Surprise that the referee didn't throw the flag there, but great coverage, I guess, by Beanie Bishop on that one. To force the referees not to throw the flag. And off on the left side, Ryan Montgomery breaks through and gets to about the 35-yard line. Anthony Wilson with the tackle, a first down for Cincinnati. Montgomery just going to follow his fullback and just get up in the open field. Anthony Wilson, a great open field tackle with a big full, with a big guy running the ball. I wouldn't have liked to have been on the tackle and then trying to tackle Ryan Montgomery. 5'10", 205 pounds of him. Low center of gravity and runs with some power. 16-yard gain. Jones. In trouble. 
breaks away, tries to throw it as he falls. Are they going to say he's sacked, or are they going to say it's incomplete? Ben Cutter was the man who tripped him up. And there's a flag, because I don't believe. Well, we'll let him explain. There we go. Number five. Offense. Penalty is enforced at the spot of the foul. Loss of down. Second down. Yeah, that pass. Nobody in the neighborhood, and he was still in the tackle box. No yeah, receiver Jones, in the area. Emory Jones tried to, tries to get away from Ben Cutter, and right there, just at the end, he realizes he's getting ready to go down, so he tries to throw it away. And as you can see, nobody's in the area right there. But a great rush by Ben Cutter, the freshman. He was close to getting out of the tackle box, but not close enough. Jones, after the loss of 11, runs up the middle. Christian Stokes brings him down after a gain of eight. Earlier in this drive, they had Xavier Henderson open, and Beanie Bishop was able to make a great play on the ball. Xavier Henderson at the top of our screen, look for them to get back to him up maybe on this play. Third and 13. Henderson has been good down the field. They go to him again, but short of the sticks. Well short of the sticks. You got to go for it on fourth down here. There's This is two down territory anyway. He's about five yards shy of the first down. Beanie Bishop in coverage. I think you have to go for it, especially with the play that you called on third down. You called a play that was short of the sticks to bring up a fourth and manageable. So you got to go for it right here for sure. And they will. Checking with the sideline. 6.45 to go in the contest. West Virginia bringing the blitz. Cincinnati picks it up. Jones, plenty of space, takes off, turns on the Jets, and taken down inside the 40 to the 37-yard line, Anthony Wilson. I like what Emory Jones does right here because all the way he wants Xavier Henderson. Beanie Bishop was playing tight coverage, press coverage, and Xavier Henderson was able, able to get a clean release. So Emory Jones pulls it down and gets it done with his legs. Big game there on that play of 25 yards. They take a shot down the field. Incomplete. And it looks like Jones and the receiver not on the same page. Beanie Bishop in coverage. It's been all Xavier Henderson today for this offense for Cincinnati. If I'm Emory Jones, I'm definitely frustrated because it looked like Xavier Henderson was the only person running a route on that last play. Jones with the keeper on the left side. Dives forward. He's going to be short of the sticks. Alba with the tackle. Third down and short upcoming. Great job right here by Amory Jones. Just getting what he can and making sure that he dives forward to bring up a 32. Kiner pushes forward for a first down, lowering the shoulder. You said it earlier, partner. He does not shy away from contact. He doesn't shy away from contact, and he always falls forward, it seems like. Man, on a cold night like this, I wouldn't like to be tackling Kiner out there. And he has not given up, and neither has Jones in this offense. To the end zone, short for Evan Prater. Flag on the play. And you called for it earlier, saying there wasn't a flag on the underthrow, and on this time, there looks like there could be on Bishop. Pass interference, number 11, offense, defense, excuse me, 15 yard penalty, first down. Yeah, Beanie Bishop is usually pretty solid with his coverage, but on this one, doesn't get his eyes flipped around. Right, Parker is able to go try to make a play on the football, and Beanie Bishop trying to come up through it, screen his face a little bit. Referee's going to call that every single time, especially when your body's touching the wide receiver. Yeah, hands on him, not looking back. That's an easy call. 
5.15 left in the game. High snap. Jones corrals it. Walks one to the end zone. Easy touchdown to Matea. His second touchdown of the game. And Cincinnati showing life. Orlando, they are not laying, laying down despite the big deficit at the moment. Yeah, if you're head coach Scott Satterfield, that's what you want to see. You want to see your offense continue to go out there and fight. Your defense to do the exact same thing. Cincinnati able to put together a drive right there, complete some third down conversions, move the sticks and find the end zone. So a great job by this offense staying in this thing and keep on fighting. Extra point is up and good. 10 plays, 83 yards, three minutes and 36 seconds off the clock. 5-11 to go. Cincinnati not going away. West Virginia can seal it on the other side. He's honored today and immortalized here at Mountaineer Field. So many awards. There's the Stag Award. And, of course, inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2005. What a treat to have him in in studio here in the booth, Orlando. Yeah, you could just feel the greatness when you're around his presence. It was unbelievable to see him and his family out there on that field as he was awarded and, and just put into, what did they put him in the Hall of Fame tonight? They put him up on the, uh, I guess in the circle ring of honor. Yeah, yeah the ring of honor here out in their field. I, I, I want to have my name put somewhere. You know what? <laughs> We'll find somewhere. Maybe we'll call Miami. You know, the University of Miami will put you up there in the ring of honor. I'll call Mario Cristobal for you. We'll be back in just a moment. They have been in total control here for most of this contest. On senior day, where a legend, Don Nealon, was inducted into the ring of honor and immortalized. Garrett Green has been fantastic. Garrett Green and Pat White are the only two quarterbacks in West Virginia history with 150 yards on the ground and 200 or more in the air. That's some good company when you're in the same breath as Pat White with this particular school. Absolutely. Head coach Neil Brown said earlier this week that Garrett Green to get to 200 would be great for this offense, and we got there past that today. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is must, a must-have for Big 12 fans. The college basketball season starts Monday, November 6th with over 275 exclusive games, including more than 25 men's and women's conference games, as well as the early rounds of both conference tournaments. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, Marilyn Payne with you here. Jeff Nelson on stats, Brian Corey spotter and of course our producer John Wilson director Major Howe bringing you this contest here today at our field in Morganton third down upcoming about four minutes to go in this one and Orlando as we see West Virginia trying to run this thing out on a third and three what are your biggest takeaways, I guess, from this one? If you're West Virginia, you got to feel really good about how you were able to bounce back, especially after last week. But I think the thing that you have to look at today is how Garrett Green went out there and commanded this offense. He was spectacular in how he threw the football. thought he was great with his footwork, and that's why we see them put up 42 points offensively. Right on the right side. White spins out of trouble and out of bounds near midfield. Jawan Briggs, an 18-yard gain for White, and he continues to put up monster numbers, over 200 yards on the ground today for the freshman. Yeah, Jaheim White has been spectacular. You see Briggs, the big fella, down the field. But this young man, for his first start, and he got dinged up in the first quarter on the first right. series. That's right. And yet he was still able to get back in the game and take care of business. So the future's very bright for this backfield in West Virginia between Jaheim White and C.J. Donaldson. C.J. Donaldson being a sophomore, Jaheim White being a freshman. 
Another handoff this time to Justin Johnson. Let's take one more look at the Big 12 scoreboard. We mentioned earlier Oklahoma with the win in Provo. TCU holding on to a lead in the third quarter. And Houston with the surprise against Oklahoma State. Houston lost to Cincinnati last week. Oklahoma State lost to Central Florida, who's got an early lead against Texas Tech. And there's Frazier being checked out of the game. Zach Frazier, the junior, he's got NFL written all over him, right? You would, I mean, listen, who would know better than you? You played in the league for seven years. Yeah, one think? of the best cut centers in the country, in my opinion, George. You look at this West Virginia offense, Justin and Zach Johnson. Frazier is the one that oh, makes this here. offensive line goes. They play a really oh, good style of offense. Right. And they play, honestly, how I played this game, down the field, working up. Orlando, before you finish that story, here's the bowl eligibility in the conference. You see the teams there, and there's still a couple of teams that need one more win, BYU, Texas Tech, and Central Florida. TCU and Houston need two wins and are in action as we speak, and Houston with a surprising lead at the moment. But yeah. you were saying about Frazier. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, and I love what head coach Neil Brown just did, right? You, you sub him out of the game when he's already out there, right? So this fan base gets an opportunity to really celebrate Zach Frazier because he's the one that makes that offensive line go up front. One of the best players on this football team, and he's taking care of business today for this Mountaineer offense. And Garrett Green's day looks to be done as well. Green, 12 of 19, 210 yards in the air with a touchdown, 11 carries for 154 yards on the ground, and three TDs rushing. Again, only him and Pat White have put up those kind of numbers here at West Virginia. And Nico Markiel checking in at quarterback as West Virginia looks to. So you want to know something else, partner? And the crowd doesn't love that as West Virginia will be shy of the first down on a fourth and short. Curious to see what they do, but what were you gonna say to me, partner? Nico Markiel, I've known him since he was about three years old as well. No way, how do you His know him? His father, Kenny Markiel, um, lives in Colorado and was actually introduced to me by Joe Pananzio and oh. Jeff Stoutland, yeah. two guys that I met at the, coach played for at the University of Miami. So I've known Nico, and his older brother Santino and, and his family since Nico was running around. I'm happy to see Nico get an opportunity to play today. Well, it feels like you got a lot of ties to this team. You got the Marky <laughs> family, CJ Donaldson's family. You know anyone in Garrett Green's family? Because he's had a heck of a day. No, but I'm trying to meet somebody in his yeah. family after the day he just had, and, right? And Jaheim White, you know them? <laughs> you you want to meet them too, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. Want to meet all the He's young stars, the, the future stars of the game. Fourth and one. Markiel keeps and gets the first down. So he made Papa proud there, I'm sure. Let's take a look at Jaheim White's day, though, Orlando. What a day for this young fella, 204 yards on the ground. Yeah, he was tough, he was physical, but most importantly, he showed his ability in the open field. If you're this coaching staff, you gotta be really excited about this young man, able to find the end zone and just put some great things on tape. Man, unbelievable day by him, especially for the fact that he was banged up, but he stayed focused and was able to find the end zone multiple times today. What a day for that young fella. First start over 200 yards. And Johnson getting in the mix as he's breaking tackles, pinballing through defenders, and down near the 10 yard line. A punctuation mark for this run game. Taj Ward brought him down. What an incredible day on the ground for West Virginia. 
about 400 yards rushing Orlando Franklin. And it's only been on about five different plays. The quarterback draw, some off tackle stuff, counter OT pulling guards and tackles. West Virginia just did what they do best, and that's run the football in between the tackles, create edges, and knock them back. 425 yards rushing on the day for this West Mountaineers offense. A big win day. Victory formation and a victory for West Virginia. They'll get their seventh win of the season, will improve their bowl standings. And a great bounce back after a tough loss to Oklahoma. By the way, Jaheim White is the first 200 yard rusher since 2016 for West Virginia. Not bad for your first start. High expectations moving forward for the young Jaheim White. December 3rd, 2016, Justin Crawford had 209 yards. Jaheim White finishes with 204, nearly 10 yards a carry. And let's send it down to Maryland with Coach Neil Brown. You called it before the game and you reaffirmed it at halftime, but how was Garrett Green able to have such a good day today? Well, the kid takes a lot of pride in what he does and uh, he's really played at a high level. I think he's the, maybe the best pure athlete in our conference. And uh, I knew he wasn't going to play like he did last week. And he worked really hard. And he proved he could throw the football today. And I can't say enough about our O-line. We're really good up front. I thought they really got snubbed not being on the Joe Moore watch list. And they took it out on Cincinnati today. How about Jaheim White being able to step in for the start and play the way he, w he did? What was, uh, what was the enabler there? Well, he's an elite player. and. Uh, you know, he's been getting better and better, and it really starts with handling business off the field, and he's really brought that on the field, and he's, he's going to be an elite player here for a long time. I got to grab Garrett here. Now, you and I talked earlier this week. You really wanted Frazier, your center, to have an impactful game. How did he set the tone for your offensive line to enable you today? Yeah, he's the best center in the country. He should be a first-round draft pick easily. Um, there's no one I'd rather snap in the ball, and he showed it tonight. What about you? Coach said you really did not want to play today the way you played last week. How were you able to play better today? I think a lot of us just trust my teammates. Uh, we, had, we had a great week of practice. Uh, the O-line played their, played their tails off. Uh, wide receivers made plays downfield, and you know, I'm happy we got the win. Thank you for the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Maryland. Garrett Green, 12 for 19 through the air, 210 yards, one touchdown, and three touchdowns on the ground, 11 carries for 154 yards, Orlando. Unbelievable job by West Virginia as a whole entire football team. Offense finding ways to rally after defense going out there to make big plays. The story is definitely Garrett Green and his ability to correct some of his mistakes that he's had all year, being able to be efficient in the passing game, but also get it done with his legs today. Him and Jaheim White were fantastic for West Virginia. What a job to bounce back for the Mountaineers after that loss last week against Oklahoma. I want to thank our producer, John Wilson, director, Major Howe, our statistician, Jeff Nelson, our spotter, Brian Corey. For my analyst, Orlando Franklin, and our sideline reporter, Marilyn Payne, I'm George Sedano. We bid you farewell from Morgantown. Country Road is being sang. West Virginia 42, Cincinnati 21. Good night.